welcome everyone. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack Academy. We provide advanced digital marketing training uh, here in uh, Miami. And uh, we have been offering for the last seven weeks, uh, coping, Keeping Your Business Alive During COVID-19, a webinar series. Um, and I'm really excited today to welcome uh, my dear friend, uh, my videographer and uh, BizHacks, one of BizHacks instructors, Neto Almanza, who's gonna be talking about social media video ads, tips and tricks. This really is at the heart of the kind of training that BizHack does, um, technical training that also has a strong uh, marketing and creative and storytelling component to it. Um, I'm really, really excited to announce uh, back by popular demand next week, we're gonna have back Bruce Turkel. Bruce was one of the first speakers we had in this series uh, and he has really generously uh, agreed to come back um, and do another presentation for us. Uh, Bruce is going to be talking next Wednesday about how to achieve certainty in an uncertain time. Uh, you can see the link is at bizhack56.eventbrite.com. So if you wanna start um, reserving the time on your calendar for next week with Bruce, Bruce is also gonna be announcing uh, a really exciting new offering that he's putting together. Uh, since he's not able to do keynote speeches, uh, he's actually gonna be launching a master class and mastermind group. And he's gonna unveil that next week and give you a little more detail about that. So I definitely encourage you to come. Bruce is an amazing uh, marketing mind uh, and an incredibly engaging speaker. Um, the week after that, we're gonna be really looking at uh, re-entry. Uh, as you know, uh, states are starting to loosen up and allow folks back uh, to business, but uh, in, a, in, a, in a phased way. Um, and how do you do that uh, consciously, uh, safely, uh, is what Ellen Marchman, one of the top uh, PR and marketing people in town, is gonna talk to us about and how to do it in a, in a conscious way. And then finally, the week after that, we are, uh, three weeks from now, we're gonna be talking about building community, the power and potential for your business with uh, Shana Ostrovitz, who is a startup founder and runs an accelerator called 1909 based in Palm Beach. So a really great lineup of speakers. So I wanted to launch in with a little mini lesson because I felt like um, given that this kind of training that Neto is about to give is so core to what we do uh, at BizHack in, um, in our courses, in our master classes, in our upcoming five week course. I wanted to put into context how video figures into the larger, um, the larger aspects of running a Facebook ad campaign and really any ad campaign. So there are really five pillars in Facebook advertising. The first pillar is the campaign objective. Now, this goes beyond the objective of your business to specifically what you want the person in Facebook to do when they see your ad. So the campaign objective in the context of Facebook means something a little different than, oh, I wanna generate leads and sales. It's actually what action do you want them to take as a result of your ad? So I'll give you an example you can ask them to message you using Facebook Messenger. You can ask them to click to your website. You can ask them to fill out a little form inside of Facebook to give you their contact information. You can ask them to watch your video. And depending on what campaign objective you choose, that will determine who sees your ad, how much money you spend, and how effective it is at achieving your larger business goals. So picking the right campaign objective is not obvious and it's not simple and it really sets the stage for everything that comes next. The single most important pillar of Facebook advertising is your audience. What Facebook does better than any tool, and I would include Google in this, is it allows you to target audiences by interest. Facebook is a massive psychographic targeting 
tool. Psychographic targeting is really your interests and your likes. And all those pages you like, all those posts you interact with, Facebook is collecting that data and building up a profile of who you are as a person. And Facebook gives you as an advertiser the power to target people who have the exact profile that you need to drive business for your customer, for your, for your, for your business. So to learn how to do audience targeting on Facebook and to do trial and error to find that ideal audience on Facebook is a massive learning undertaking and the single most important factor to success on Facebook. You can pick the right objective and have the perfect ad and have a great offer, but if it's showing up in front of the wrong people, Facebook advertising will not work for you. And so we spend a lot of time in the five week course talking about how to figure out who your ideal audience is in theory and then find them in practice on the Facebook platform. Next is your irresistible offer. It's not, it's not enough just to get in front of the right audience. You have to give them something that makes them want to click and to do business with you. And I would add that while an irresistible offer is important in marketing, in Facebook advertising, it's important that it be ideally a free irresistible offer. I'm actually going to mention a lot of cool tricks with the offers. Yeah, uh, one of the things that, uh, that um, and this is now getting into the stuff that Neto is going to be really digging into. Neto is going to talk a lot about the irresistible offer and then, of course, about the visual. The visual is we recommend it be a video. And the reason we recommend it be a video is A, that's the vernacular of social media. B, that's what Facebook wants you to do. And they give you greater reach at a lower cost if you use video. And C, we have through many years of experience of doing this found that videos allow you to get better results for less money. So much so that we actually insist that anyone who takes our course runs videos that they create themselves. And today's session is gonna really dig into how do you create that irresistible offer and then how do you create that amazing video that can actually drive conversions. And then finally, the compelling message. It's not just enough to have the pretty picture, it's not just a pretty video and the great offer. You have to surround that with just a little bit of really well-written text that gets people to want to react. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a five week course where we dig in detail into all of these topics and more. And um, that course is starting soon. So at the end of this session, we're gonna have a little info session, a fireside chat, where we're gonna talk about the five week course. So for those of you who are interested, please stick around and we'll answer uh, many of your questions that you might have about the course and whether it's a fit for you. Without further ado, I wanna uh, now move into today's presentation. Yeah, we're going to be talking uh, with Neto about social media video tips and tricks. Uh, he's going to cover a lot of ground today, including A-B testing, best length for video ads, your irresistible offer, how to set up your lighting, how to deal with transitions, and how to do an attention grabbing opener in your video. Now Neto, uh, in addition to being an extremely stylish dude, uh, is the founder and runs Video Works Miami, which is a social media video advertising agency. He can run your video, he can create your videos and run them for you. And he has worked with a pretty extraordinary group uh, of clients, including Miss Universe, uh, a lot of media companies, uh, folks in Mexico, uh, which is very And he also. Um, uh, he also, uh, his biggest video accomplishment is one of his videos uh, appeared in Times Square. Can you give us a little more context about that, Neto? Sure, that was uh, exactly a year ago. Uh, I did a video for a sunglass company and it was featured on Times Square for about two weeks. It's pretty amazing to have a video on Times Square, not gonna lie. I think it's one of yeah. the biggest highlights of last year. Uh, congratulations on that. And, and you know, Neto is just like a really cool dude. Um, he's lived all over the country. He's from Mexico. He's lived uh, all over the world, traveled to 44 countries, skydived, bungee jumped, swam with sharks, um, hosted me for a barbecue at his house. Um, <laughs> Neto is also a BizHack alumnus, uh, one of our most generous and enthusiastic. Um, and he's a certified digital marketer through us. And he was such a kind of uh, standout in the course, he then became an instructor of ours and uh, has 
taught a number of cohorts. And, um, you know, Neto, I, I just want to say thank you. You've always been so generous in what you've had to say about BizHack and how it's impacted you and your career. And uh, you're absolutely, uh, you know, we, we started BizHack uh, to help folks like you. And I'm so glad that we've been helpful in some way to you. Well, like my quote says there, it, it really is the best investment I've ever made by far. Really, more than more than uh, stocks, Bitcoin. This class really, uh, I, I made the most of it and through the right connections and the information I used, um, I really made a lot of, lot of profit. Yeah, thank you for that. And then I just wanted to, I like to try to give a personal note if I can. And I just wanted to show some of the photos from, Net, uh, from uh, Neto's wedding. Uh, honestly, when he said, shared this with me, you know, when he got married a year or two ago, they were some of the most beautiful wedding shots I have ever seen. This was in Mexico. Um, tequila, Mexico. Tequila, Mexico in, in an agave field. Um, and so, I, you know, I just feel like um, Neto is a man with incredible sense of visual um, and, and personal style. And so with that, I want to uh, hand it over to my friend, BizHack instructor and uh, entrepreneur extraordinaire, Neto Almanza. Thank you, Dan, for the introduction. And uh, thank you for everyone who's out there. I see a lot of familiar faces. Um, shout out to my BNI friends. I see Phyllis is there, Bill Sussman, Christopher, Keith Spurlock, uh, several familiar faces. So I'm gonna go straight to it. Do you see my background right now? Yeah, we see your green screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the presentation. Cool. So if you if, if all do a lot of marketing, you know who that guy is. He's, his <laughs> name is Gary Vaynerchuk. You've probably seen a post of him. He's everywhere. He actually recommends that you post 60 times a day. It's ridiculous, but it works for him. It's been working for him for a long time. He's one of my role models. So I've, I've spoken with him. I've actually been on his uh, podcast in, in an interview uh, when he came to Miami. So as Dan said, um, I, I was born in Mexico. I love avocados. I've traveled everywhere and I run a video production company in Miami. This is when I was doing the video for Parkinson's Foundation, which was a nationwide TV commercial for um, a campaign that they were running. So let's go straight to it because I know you guys want to learn all this stuff. We had a long intro. What Dan was saying is that we have five pillars, right? We have the campaign objective, the target audience, visual offer and message. This is basically the most important thing when you do any campaign. Right now, we're gonna focus on the visual. And the visual is the most important thing. Why? Because you need to get people's attention. Attention is a new currency. You can really profit if you know how to make, if you know how to convince people and make the best possible impression. But to make that impression, you need three seconds to really capture their attention. So let's go to point number one. This is probably one of the most important things, which is A-B testing video ads. I'm sure you probably have heard this before. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? This is with the stock market. You don't put all your, your money into one specific stock. Well, you shouldn't put all your money onto one ad that you assume is gonna work. The thing is that you don't really know how your audience thinks and uh, receives information. So diversify your media investment into at least four videos. You can do three, but I recommend four just so you can test out and see which one gives the best result. And the best thing about this is that if you were to do this for television, you have to sign contracts and pay in advance for at least two weeks or a month. But with social media video ads, you can do it for a day with 10 bucks. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal, pretty simple, and uh, it's very easy to do. So I'm going to show you, I went through my Facebook and I recommend you do the same. Whenever you log in, just browse and see all the posts. You'll see that below the logo, there's a word that said sponsored. Sponsored means that they paid to appear on your feed. So you've been targeted. They think that you will most likely buy their product. So ClickFunnels thinks that I'm going to buy their product. So this is one of the ads that I got from ClickFunnels. So he starts with the clapper, hey, quick shots. And then he goes straight to it, pointing at something. 
click funnels, the guy is ridiculous. He appeared everywhere on my newsfeed. First ad was click funnels. The second one is Russell Brunson. That's his, his name. Then he, he sends me an ad that says, Hey, buy this book, blah, 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 blah. But indirectly, this book is going to lead to the previous product, which was the, the one here, which is the click funnels. So I get this ad, right? What's the next ad? Another uh, Russell Brunson. So see how he's A-B testing. First, he appears on screen. Then it's a testimonial about the book. Now a testimonial about uh, the, her experience, with this, which is this lady. And then he A-B tests with a visual, which is this. I like how the, the secret masterclass seems like Bud Light. It gives that feeling with the font and the blue rectangle. So then he, he sends me this one. These are all within 24 hours. The guy has at least four ads on me within 24 hours. He knows what he's doing. Um, so, oh, by the way, then, then I got another ad about uh, someone else who works for him. So that here's, uh, uh, what's his name? Russell Brunson again. It's crazy. I got five ads with him within one day. So this is just an example. So ways that you can A-B test your videos. This is pretty fun and pretty simple. One simple way is change your colors. What you can do is that you can just change at least one color, whether it's the color of your branding or a color that you think might catch people's attention. Try different colors. You never know, for example, if I'm doing this green screen background in a video, then I can switch to a red background or a yellow background or a blue background. You just never really know what's going to get people's attention. So try a color that might pop up more. Magisto did this, uh, even though they changed their, their, the person at dog, they tried the yellow and then they tried the pink. This is an ad that was uh, that displayed to me. This one's probably one of the most important things because you basically have three seconds to capture your audience's attention. Have different intros. When people have, when people see your ad, they're gonna judge you. That's the truth. They're gonna judge you within three seconds. So if, if you try different ways to introduce your ad, maybe they're engaged with the third or the fourth option. You really never know. So try different intros. For example, this is an ad that I did about two months ago for a coding school. The first intro was with a, a female. My second intro was with a male in the classroom. And then the third intro was kind of sketch, which is, oh, she's messing up the sandwich. By the way, that, uh, Dan, did you see that ad? This was uh, in the CIC building in the subway. So one of the, a former student of BizHack owns that subway franchise and I got to record there. Um, so awesome. try different intros because you never really know uh, what's going to get their attention. Another very cool way uh, to get people's attention and to A-B test your videos is to use blog titles. I don't know if you heard this, but 85% of the ads are without, are, are not heard. So basically, whatever you put out is on mute for the people because they might be in a meeting or they might be uh, making breakfast, they might be in the car somewhere and people just don't want to be distracting others. So 85% of videos are without sound and when you put blog titles, you basically tell them exactly what you want them to know. So try blog titles and other styles of word animations. A perfect example is Canva. I was, this is an ad that appeared to me two days ago. And I really like how they use the simple blog titles and they use word animations. So remove the background, make it quick, make it big, make it fun, make it real. Very simple, they go straight to the point. No need to fake it and make it. So this is an example of blog titles. And after this presentation, I'm gonna give you websites that you can use for free, where you can use all these uh, tools. So you don't need to know how to use Premiere or After Effects. 
this is just basically two clicks away that you can do this for yourself. And I know that uh, several businesses use it because it's very simple to use. Try different lead roles. So new talent might deliver better results. Maybe your target audience likes a specific, uh, you know, person that appears on screen. Maybe they want to see something else. So Brendan Burchard did this two different ads to me and they basically just showed two different people. Maybe Brandon said, hey, maybe this lady on the left might convince this guy more or maybe this other woman on the right. So try different people. As you can see, it's the, it's the same company with the same objective and they're just trying different backgrounds with different people. This is one of my favorite ones because it's, nowadays you can really tell, you can sniff out what's an ad and you just wanna skip it. So what a lot of businesses like Glossier is doing is that it seems less like an ad. Be simple and don't imply an ask. So if any of you are familiar with Glossier, they own the makeup, like all the women love all these products. My wife loves it. Uh, they really understood the audience. It's like the Warby Parker of makeup for women. And so look at that ad. Just put it on the arm, put it on the lips. And that's it. That was their ad. Mm. Boom. And it's just in a loop. This other one is pretty cool uh, because why do people go online? Why do they go to social media? They want to feel entertained, whether it's gossip, news. So why not make your ad an entertainment? And I've been bombarded with ads from this company. It's called Billie Jean Marketing. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's uh, um, this guy does all these skits. So do something that entertains. If any of you have seen Wolf of Wall Street, you probably have, right? Uh, it's yeah. a, the Leonardo DiCaprio movie. So this guy runs a marketing company. Look at this ad. It has nothing to do with marketing. He's gonna shave a woman's head. Oh no. Oh, come on. Does he really do it? No, he stops. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was gonna be too much. <laughs> so, I mean, the guy's entertaining and yeah. he's, uh, he does ads that he's about to buy his Rolls Royce and all this stuff, but uh, skits and entertainment is a good way to go. People just generally want to be uh, entertained. So does anyone have any questions with the first part about A-B testing? So um, Kate had a question um, that I think she just wanted clarity on. She said that you're saying four videos, test four videos at the same time, question mark? Ideally, yes. You can always do two, you can do three, you can do four. There's no right or wrong answer. You just have more options to play with. And the truth is that you really never know which one's gonna produce better results. Whenever I've created ads, I always assume this one's gonna be the winner for sure. But then another video that I wasn't expecting gets way better results. So the, the more you try, the more options you have to really see which one's the best, go for four, go for three, whatever you, whatever you can produce. If you're on your own and you think three is enough, try three, but just make them very different. Same message, same objective, same concept, but just change three different things. So three or four, around that, you'll, you're good. Does that answer your question? That's great. And um, we don't have any other, oh, we have uh, from Emily. Uh, how long do you recommend for an A-B test to run before deciding where to put the larger budget? Ideally, test it out for three days. Three days is enough to really gather data and the budget just really depends on how much you wanna put in. Um, you can go anywhere from 10 bucks to 100 bucks per ad, but try it out for three days. That gives you enough data to really see the metrics and see which one is outproducing the other ones. There's always gonna be one that's better than the other ones by probably maybe uh, a few clicks or you can just see which one has more videos watched, which one has uh, more engagement. 
the Facebook ads manager data just gives you all that information and you can see which ones are producing the other ones. So try it out for three days. Um, we have another question from Luis. Um, is it possible to know on Facebook and Instagram which part of the video has the most impact on the audience or uh, until when you have their attention? So again, if you use the ads manager, it's going to tell you video watch that 25%, 50%, 75% average watch time. So it's not going to tell you exactly, oh, uh, when he was about to cut the, shave the woman's head, that was the best part. No, it's just going to say until what, what second is the average watch time and which is what percentage of the video is being watched. So make your own judgment based on that information. Yeah, just to kind of add a little bit of color and then let um, Neto go on to length. Um, two things. Number one, A-B test traditionally means A and B, two versions. And honestly, if we had had this webinar even like a year ago, we would have said two versions of the ad. But what's happened is Facebook has integrated much more sophisticated artificial intelligence tools that allow them automatically to use machine learning to optimize ads. And it's allowing for multivariate testing, ABC tests or ABCD tests, and still getting, uh, doing that efficiently at a small budget. So uh, Facebook has really pushed the envelope and Google as well with artificial intelligence and machine learning to basically automate what used to be a very manual process. And then as far as um, video viewing, they allow you to see how many people drop off as you watch the video. And so you can pinpoint almost down to the second where your video is stopping working and you can then work on that section. So it's a really powerful tool, not only for you to generate leads, but also for you to understand what kind of visuals your audience is reacting to. Back to you, Neto. Cool, point number two, the best length for video. So, the Facebook video average watch time benchmark is 10 seconds. Video ads longer than 15 seconds have much higher abandon rates than those shorter ones. So again, if you go beyond 15 seconds, as Dan was saying, people are just gonna abandon the ad and they're just gonna keep scrolling. So if, if you can see that image of the lady with the phone holding it, She's scrolling with her thumb. So when someone gives you a chance, you created a thumb stopper. That means that you stop, she stopped her thumb to watch your ad. But after 15 seconds, she's like, nah, I'll just move on because this wasn't interesting to me. So maybe going beyond 15 seconds, you're gonna lose that potential lead, potential client. Facebook users watch ads five times longer when they're consuming video intentionally. What does that mean? In the newsfeed, for example, people are in discovery mode and tune in several times a day, not spending much time on content, including ads. What does that mean? That when you take out your phone and you're on your newsfeed, you, you just want to get distracted and just see what's up. But when you're in Facebook watch, which means that you really want to watch videos. That's, that's where you're using the app for. That's your intention. That's, your, uh, that's, that's what you're doing intentionally. Then users tend to consume content and are open, open to watching longer ads. So there are ads that are three minutes, four minutes, and they have the best results when, they're, uh, when they are in Facebook Watch. The average attention span is eight seconds. So we are pretty much like a goldfish right now. You get distracted very easily. So keep this in mind, eight seconds. That's why I like doing my presentations fast because I know, I know I'll lose your attention. So I, I like to go fast, eight seconds. Another important key thing when it comes to the length is that mention your brand within the first three seconds of your Facebook video ad. Why? Because you already made an, you, if you have that opportunity, might as well make that impression of your brand on them. So within the first three seconds, put your, put your brand and your logo out there so they can see who it is. 
As I mentioned previously, 85% of videos are seen with sound turned off. Keep this in mind. So whether you want to add captions or blog titles. So here's the numbers. This is what the C CCO of Facebook said, uh, Suzanne, I forgot her last name. For better brand metrics or so better association, when you wanna, if you're in the, on the first part of the marketing funnel, on the awareness, six second ads is the way to go. So if people are barely gonna know about you, just do a six second ad. There are many ways to do six second ads. Just say exactly what you want. Like just get to the point and you can do that within six seconds. Save the best for first. We've always uh, told that, oh, you save the best for last. But when it comes to attention span engagement, you gotta hit, the, you gotta hit with your first, uh, with your best. So if any of you are familiar with baseball, whoever is your fourth at, fourth at bat, your home run hitter, put them as the first at bat, because you want to start delivering home runs right away. So 15 seconds, if, if uh, five to 15 seconds is what they recommend uh, for the ideal Facebook ad. So again, this might sound short, but you can definitely produce this. Uh, it's enough time to really say what you want, give your offer, give your message, and for them to make that association with you. If you're doing an explainer video, which is someone talking to the camera, explaining, give it at least 30 seconds because maybe your product uh, is not like an elevator pitch that you can just explain right away or you want to have a testimonial. Some ads that are watched on the Facebook watch can be longer. So for explainer video, at least 30 seconds. And, and this is something that I spoke to a Facebook uh, associated, associate last week. And this is what he recommended to me because I'm doing a, a video course. So he told me that try it at least for 30 seconds if it's an explainer. Any questions regarding the length? Is there any questions, Dan? No questions right now, but we can give folks a second to kind of post things. But um, I just wanted to emphasize that shorter is better. Um, and you know, 12 seconds is getting long in the Facebook advertising world. Um, I gotta say, for me, this is super challenging, uh, but I do recall you know, when I was working in radio, I worked in broadcast, that writing short was really hard for me. It's still hard for me, but it's kind of like an acquired skill. Um, and so I guess the one question um, I would have for you, Neto, is have you gotten better at short form the deeper you've gotten into running your agency? Um. You know, I've actually, one of the ads that, I, that I've used is a, a loop, a three second loop video. So it's just a video that's animated that's in loop, but it's three seconds. So it's hard to really say something, hey, buy now, click here, blah, 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 blah. Maybe sometimes it's just a word that you're saying, like click below for this amazing offer and it's animated. So a video, when you do a video ad, it doesn't necessarily have to be something so well produced with, a, with an actor or uh, using a camera. Sometimes it could be something that's, that could have been a photo, but you just made it animated. Um, so on YouTube, there are three second ads. It's amazing, but they just go straight to the point. Uh, I've seen three second ads by whiskey brands that they just show the whiskey being poured on the glass, they show the bottle, they show the logo, and that's it. Because they just wanna have that brand metric that I recommended previously. So it's very doable. It's, um, and it's better, it's easier to do, and you get better results. So it's less stress too, to really be thinking about a storyboard or a creative idea, just go short, and that's where you can A-B test the length as well. Go short, maybe go for a little longer. But yes, uh, I've been doing a lot of six second ads, three second ads, 10 second ads. Yeah. There's no specific, like you need to stop here. You can just go as long as you need. But I recommend don't go beyond 15 seconds. Yeah, as short as possible to get the job done. And if getting the job done requires 30 seconds, don't use the ad for a video. Uh, Timothy Foster asked, what are your thoughts on animation versus live video? 
So it is our primitive instinct as human beings to scan faces. We want to see through our ancestors, the only way they could survive is that they needed to see if that was a face, if it was a friend or a foe. Are they a threat? Are they a friend? So we like to see other people's faces. When it comes to animation, a cartoon, and showing someone, a person is always gonna give better results because of that primitive instinct that we have that we wanna scan for faces, we wanna see who it is. Do, they, do we know them? Are they a threat? Are they, are they someone that we might, to be, might wanna uh, have a relationship connection with? So a face is always better than an animation. But again, you can A-B test this because you might have animation. And when I mean animation, it means those cartoon illustrations that everyone does that it's in the office with those big heads. Maybe that kind of animation won't deliver a lot of results, but maybe an illustration that is just graphic uh, visuals with words will, will give better results. So again, A-B test it, you just really never know. Uh, it just depends on how you make it as well. If you make an animation that is a static frame for like five seconds, you're going to lose people's attention. So it's all on how you make the animation. But between a, a cartoon figure of a person and a real person, the person always wins. So um, we're going to move on. Uh, I'll address a couple of the other questions like from Marla uh, in, the, in the chat. But I uh, would love for you to move on. We want to make sure we have enough time for everything. Sure. So third step, irresistible offer. I know I have some friends here like Pete uh, from Tony Robbins Business Mastery and Christopher Rivera. So when we did the Tony Robbins Business Mastery, he, Tony Robbins was emphasizing so much on creating an irresistible offer. He mentioned it all the time. He said that key, the key to long-term success for any business is innovation and marketing. And part of marketing is making an irresistible offer. So not only Tony Robbins has said, it, has said this, but our good friend Don Vito Corleone said, I'm going to make him an offer he can refuse. A powerful man knows how to get his way. So I Googled irresistible offer, and this guy appeared again. This guy is everywhere. He's a, a, the ClickFunnels guy that did five ads on me. Russell Brunson. For, yeah. I, and I, cl I Googled click funnels for those of you who don't know, is a software that helps you digitally market. Um, and he's a, a, kind of the young up, upstart who's really taken over. He definitely has. Um, so, so yeah, I Google and this guy popped up. So what is an irresistible offer? you need to give them a compelling reason to click. Like seriously, if you're watching this, whenever you make an ad, you need to really give them a compelling reason why they should give you a chance. Why you? Why are you worth their time? So you joined this because you knew that this is gonna benefit you for your marketing strategies. So whenever you make an ad, really make a compelling reason and have you, any of you ever heard of this, WIFM? Think about this. Try to, try, to de try to decipher the initials. What do you think that means? WIFM. Give, give, it, give us a second and people can um, try not to be too profane, guys, but go ahead and put in the chat what you think WIFM means. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea personally. But it looks like everybody, <laughs> everybody knows it except for me. So uh, Rosella was first, then Anik, Aaron Clancy, Gustavo, Andrea, Eva, Sue Romanos, Carla, and Jerome, Hutch, hey Hutch, uh, all know that it means what's in it for me. Good job, what's guys. It, what's in it for me, exactly. Yeah. Way to go. Nice job. So what's in it for me is what the consumer thinks every time he sees an ad. Every time he really goes anywhere or gets an invitation to go to an event, what's in it for me? We are, um, we want to know really, does it benefit us? Are we going to improve? Is it worth our time? What's in it for me? So when you make an offer, you, you need to convince them enough that there is a lot in it for them. So I'm going to give some examples. 
and let's look at some offers. I was browsing through my newsfeed and I just did screenshots of whatever appeared to me. And apparently coaching, Facebook thinks that I wanna be a coach uh, in terms of improvement and a lot of things because that, that's who is really going after me. Maybe all of you are gonna get different kind of ads. So Brendan Burchard, his offer is, I have a wellness masterclass and I'm gonna give it to you for free for 14 days. Free access, is that a good offer? That's a phenomenal offer. That's a very good offer. He knows what he's doing. Uh, if, if some of you don't know who he is, he is like a, a Russell Brunson, Brendan Burchard. He's actually very knowledgeable and he gives a lot of emails with very useful information regarding this. And he was a guy that made these ads with these different uh, female leads. So uh, that's a very good offer. Let's see the next offer. Let's see what, what this guy or he or she did. Life on fire. So what's the offer here? Step-by-step -step guide to launch and scale your business and Midnight Tuesday coaching with us. Is there an offer? It's a little bit confusing, but they're gonna give a step-by-step -step guidance to launch and scale, maybe somewhat, so-so of an offer, I think. Next ad. Everyone knows this guy, right? He's everywhere. He's always reading the books and getting off of planes and mansions. Ty Lopez, learn online sales with funnels in 30 days. That's not a very compelling offer. He's not giving me a compelling reason to click. So I didn't click. Ryan Phillips, make your video sell more. The future of video marketing. He's not giving me an offer, but he's at least telling me, he's giving me a compelling reason to click. What's in it for me? is that I'm gonna know about the future of video marketing. So in a way I'd say that this is somewhat of a compelling reason to click, not a good offer, but good so far. Uh, and I have a few more. This one, get clients now in three simple steps without all the headaches. This is a good offer. He's giving me three simple steps to get clients. I think this one, this one's a good offer. I've been getting a lot of these ads recently. We craft Facebook ads that convert. This is a big mistake because he starts the offer with we. I don't care about you, you making ads that convert. Put in the word you. Every time you make an ad, add the word you in there. You just connects the person right away because you're talking to them directly. You're compelling them. What's in it for them? It's you. So you're gonna get ads that convert. But again, there's no offer. He's basically just bragging about how he makes ads that convert, so not a good offer. And I think this is the last one. Oh, I have one more, absolute, uh, I'll skip it. I like this offer. I was actually wowed by this. Try clip, click up free forever. What? <laughs> That's a very good offer. I've never had someone say it's free forever. Uh, there's, I mean, there's websites like Facebook and all these, things that are free forever, but if someone putting those words like that, uh, it's pretty, pretty compelling. So what are some good ways that you can offer and make good offers? Provide substantial discounts and make ones that don't cost you. So there are studies that when, um, I believe Dan gave this example, and if you wanna provide it just very briefly, Dan, about with the Dillards or Macy's about the shirt, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. So uh, during our class, you gave an example about how to, a clothing clothing uh, company said, this shirt is $75 uh, without any discount. And then they said, this shirt it was $150. Now it's 75. You're getting a 50% discount. Which one do you think sold more? The one with a 50% discount, even though uh, it was just, it was a discount per se. People just like to, to know that they're getting a good deal. So provide substantial discounts and make, make ones that don't cost you. Another one is that you need to set a deadline because offers work on the principle of urgency. You have one day, uh, you really, you have two hours to click now. This is filling up um, limited space. So. Set a deadline because that creates urgency. If you remember the infomercials, there was always a time in the bottom 
It's like this offer is going to end in 42, 42 minutes. And so uh, you feel rushed and you just go with it because, uh, because you, you have to make a, a, a decision right away. So the principle of urgency works. So set a deadline. Now, I like this sentence a lot. Your irresistible offer should communicate the value of your product or, so, or service so clearly that anyone in your target market who is considering making a purchase believes the value will far surpass the cost. So I like that last few words. They believe that the value will far surpass the cost. So be some, if you're giving someone something of value, then they really don't mind the cost. Um, and again, that's something that Tony Robbins would always say. You need, you need to be someone of value to really make a difference in the world. So offers that work. Money back guarantee. This is uh, a very important one and one that Brendan Burchard always uses is, hey, if you don't like it, I promise you, we're going to give you your money back. That gives you peace of mind, you know, because maybe something is a little bit uh, somewhat expensive. But if you're so sure that's going to work, and if it doesn't work for you, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to give you the, the money back. It's, I sounded very Italian. There. Hey, don't worry about it. Uh, so money back guarantee works. Payment plans also. So you're just dividing up the cost. So instead of being 100 bucks, hey, pay 25 bucks uh, for, for installment payments of 25 bucks. You see 25 bucks and you get, you get a little bit more um, uh, inclined to go forward because it's just, it sounds like it's cheaper, but in reality, it's, it's just four payments. So give them something for free and something that doesn't cost you. Um, click now for a free consultation. Click now for uh, a free guide on how you can uh, get your dream house uh, at a fraction of a price. Click now for, you know, whatever, whatever is that, whatever it is that you're selling or promoting, um, give them information that will benefit them. So something for free that doesn't cost you is always worth it. And after this webinar, I hope that you really browse through your newsfeed and analyze what advertisers are sending you, what they think that will convince you. Um, and really look at their offers. Their offers, as I showed below, uh, as I showed previously, they're in the bottom. Analyze their offers and see how you can use some of them. So you steal like an artist, use some of their offers for your ads. When you add an item, do you remember the, hey, but wait, there's more. If you purchase this, you're gonna get this also. So adding an item also makes people click more. Early bird discounts, people like to know that uh, it's a discount and they're just ahead of everyone else and limited time offer. So all these, all these uh, things, are offers that work for you, regardless of what your product or service is. They can all apply to anything that you sell. Any questions regarding the offers? No questions. And I just wanted to do a quick time check because I know you have a couple other Yeah, I, I uh, saw so, the time. I'm gonna go fast. Okay, perfect. Yep, no questions. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go very fast, guys. When I first learned about videography, I was told that lighting is the most important thing. And it really is. If I turn off my lights right now, I'm not the same guy. It just doesn't look as good, right? So lighting is the most important thing when it comes to making videos because it increases your production value. So I'm gonna give you three different light setups. You, if you wanna use one light, I recommend this, it's called the ring light. A lot of people who make videos online use a ring light. The advantages is that there's no shadows because there's light going all around your face. So it doesn't produce any shadow on you. It's well lit, it's a very good price. And as you can see in that image, you can put your phone or your DSLR camera right in the middle. So uh, by putting it right in the middle, you're looking directly at the light, but because it's hollow, it doesn't, it doesn't affect your vision and you get this really cool effect on your eyes. So is there a particular I, brand of ring light? I'm gonna, um, afterwards I have a handout that uh, you're gonna send to everyone that I'm gonna give links to buy. If you ever wanna buy products, the brand that I recommend, 
that is affordable, it's quality, and I use that brand for everything. It's called Newer, N-E-E-W-E-R. It's a fantastic brand. I first discovered it years ago and I, I just stick to it. But I'm gonna give, you're gonna have that information in the handout. So how does this work? An easy way to understand the setup is think of it as a clock. If the camera is at 12 o'clock, the ring light is going right at you. So this is one light. Let's say that you have two lights and there's no right or wrong answer. You can really put lights however you want. Um, I'm just giving you some guidelines. You can use these LEDs for two lights, for example. They're a hundred bucks each. It's a very good price. The advantage of, of this one is that it has color. You can change the color temperature. So for example, if your office has uh, yellow lights, you can make these lights yellow so it complements whatever lights you're using in your room. If, you, if your lights are more on the bluer scale, then you can make it uh, on the 56, 5,600 Kelvin, like you can see on that image. So the Kelvin is important. Warm lights are on the uh, 3,200 scale and blue lights are on the 5,600 scale. So these lights are very cool because you can adjust the temperature and you can arrange them differently. So for example, if you have two lights, you can do this. You can put at one o'clock and 11 o'clock. That way you're getting lights from both sides and it doesn't produce any shadows and you're very well lit. And this, wherever you are, it, it lights the background as well. You can try this setup or you can try this other one that I like that is a key light on number one and a backlight on number eight. Why is the backlight cool? Uh, important because the backlight just brings light to your hair and it adds it, it adds some contrast to your face it's it's one that you just look a little bit more sophisticated there's no right or wrong answer i personally like both i like to, i like to be well lit but i also like the backlight uh, now if you want to use three lights and this is a, a a very good light that i added to the list a very powerful light if you turn it on to any room, it, it really lights it up. Um, you can manipulate the shadows and it gives it a prof professional look. So this is a very famous setup called the three-point lighting. You have a key light, a backlight, and a fill light. The key light is still one o'clock. The backlight is eight o'clock. And then you have an extra fill light, which is around 10 to 11. And this fill light is around 50% opacity. Why do you want that? Be so that you can just, so it's not too dark and it's well lit and you have that light in the back. So this is what they use in most of the professional videos that you see. If, if, if someone does the lighting well, this is the setup. If you ever wanna make the best setup possible, this is the best setup. Um, so this is how the lighting affects your face. If you have all lights, which is the key light, the fill light and the back light, you, you can see like the first image, you see that he has a little bit of light on the hair. If you use the key light only, you have that Rembrandt style, which is what you see in a lot of movies. And, and that's just the key light only. So it's just one side lit, the other one's a little bit harsher. Uh, if you have just the key light and the fill, which is both sides, he's very well lit. And the backlight only, you can see how it affects the hair and the side of the face. I always like that extra burn on the face. It just seems a little bit cool. That's the setup that they use for photography as well. Um, it just seems more interesting. Another thing is natural light. You don't have to pay a price. You can only, the only price you pay is rent wherever you are. Natural light is very powerful because it's um, the sun, the sun outperforms any light that exists. It's millions of miles, miles away. It's diffused. Uh, if you're next to a window, you get a beautiful diffused look on your face. Natural light is, is a great way to go. I actually made a, a video about how to make videos on your apartment. And so I, I did example. So this is natural light from my DSLR and this is from my iPhone. Um, I'm going to go very quick because I have limited time. Natural light is great. Uh, if you ever use natural light, make sure it's towards your face. Never be behind a window because the window is going to out. Uh, I would overexpose you uh, because it's too bright. So I'm gonna, my last step, editing apps. 
how you can make better videos. If you want to get into better editing, Adobe no, has- I, I know your, your time is short, but could you just quickly address sound before you move on to the uh, video editing? Sure. Um, lighting is important, but sound is probably cr somewhat more crucial in certain ways because you can watch uh, a, a lower exposed video. You could, you're okay watching something that's not well lit, but you can't stand watching something that has static noise or like, <laughs> you just stop watching it because it, it's uh, really annoying. So there are uh, lavalier I, uh, microphones for your iPhone and for your camera. Right now, I'm using a lavalier to record uh, this, this presentation because I want to have better sound. And my uh, AirPods are basically my microphone. I was looking, looking up microphones for webinars and uh, these kind of calls. And the AirPods are basically it. Uh, they're fantastic. I was looking at the ones that are pretty long, but this one works. So sometimes you just gotta be practical, but there are lavaliers that are wireless or with a cable from very affordable prices, 28 bucks all the way to 400 bucks. Make sure you have audio because audio makes a difference. So invest in the audio. There are two brands that I recommend for three brands. You have the newer, you have Rode, R-O-D-E, and you have Sennheiser. Sennheiser is more expensive. Rode is in the middle and newer is very affordable, but they have uh, different mics, like the shotgun mic that goes on top of the camera or the lavaliers. So just very quickly, so I don't run out of time. If you wanna start getting into editing, Adobe has two editing programs. They have Adobe Premiere, which is the one I use, and they have Adobe Premiere Rush. Rush is more for the entry level. And the cool thing about the Rush is that you can use it on your desktop or on your iPhone. And it's very advanced, very easy to use. And when you get the hang of Adobe Premiere Rush, you're gonna to start to wanna to use Adobe Premiere. So that's a very good app that I recommend. The second one that I discovered because of Dan and Bishack was Lumen 5. Lumen 5 has stock footage that's included and they have the easy to use block title setup. So you can choose whether you wanna do a story, carousel ad, a news feed, square format, and you just basically type in the words, change the color, and bam, your video is with block titles. Lumen5 is free, they have some upgrades, but it's a phenomenal app that, website that, that I recommend. Uh, try it out because it's, it's really worth, worth uh, using it. InShot is another cool one that it's always going to have the, 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 the trademark in the bottom unless you upgrade, but it, it has some cool animations, some cool effects. You can adjust the speed. There are some transitions and you adjust the sound. So InShot is another good app. Now, the last app that I'm going to strongly recommend you start looking at is TikTok. I love TikTok and you should love TikTok too. TikTok is going to revolutionize the way we advertise because it's all on the entertainment side. Now, nowadays, um, if you really analyze what the content of Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok is, TikTok is growing at a, like accelerated turbo speed bullet bullet speed train they have two billion downloads already and tiktok is just entertainment the best thing about tiktok is that it has so many ways to edit your videos so if you want to start practicing editing videos tiktok is what i recommend and really see how people are making videos because it it's it has news checking so people just make skits on the latest trends you see what other people are doing and you add your own spice to it i strongly recommend you Look at TikTok and use TikTok for editing. Um, again, you're gonna have the trademark and it's only vertical, but it's gonna practice makes perfect. So you just gotta get the hang of it and start doing it. 
And so that basically wraps up, wraps up my presentation. Well, 1.30 on time. Uh, good job. Um, did you wanna, uh, before we um, go, go into the, there was a lot of interest around TikTok. We don't have time to go into it, but I think that there's definitely an opportunity to do a whole session on TikTok. It's really uh, a young platform. It's one of, it's probably, it's the youngest large social media platform. It's owned by a Chinese company. There's security concerns around that. Um, it's very, very popular among extremely young kids. Um, so if you have a business that caters to the very young, um, it actually was, uh, came out of a, another app called Musical.ly uh, that was around a few years ago and was really popular and got acquired by them. Um, and uh, it's interesting, you know, social media, you think of it as kind of a cutting edge area, but Snapchat, which has been around for a while, is the last big US-based innovation uh, in social media, and I think that was 2013. And TikTok uh, is a Chinese-based company, and it's really taken the world by storm. I think it has about one quarter of the users of Facebook in a matter of you know 500 uh, million users, uh, and probably way more than that, um, last I checked. And it's gonna keep growing. It's, it's a great app. Um, so, N Neto, uh, I wanted to just give you the floor one more time. First of all, amazing presentation. Thank you for the care and effort you put into it. Um, you also have a uh, course, I guess, that you're going to be running? Yes. So, something that um, I've learned is that I can either make videos for businesses and for people. I can coach you on how you can improve your videos. Or I can just basically teach you everything I know so that you make your own videos, whether you're in Puerto Rico, Mexico City, or really anywhere. I give the most fundamental uh, aspects to making video, and I am finishing with a 35 lesson course. So right now I'm doing pre-registration because I'm gonna finish it within about 10 days. And you can really, I'm, I'm basically giving all my secrets away uh, because I really want people to make their own content. And so, yeah, uh, if you go to my website, there's a form there. And if you pre-register, then you'll, you'll get a early bird discount. So there's a limited time offer. I'm using all those offer words. Uh, so yeah, register please, because um, I know that for example, some people are in real estate or some people are in coaching. Some other have small businesses. Every business needs videos because regardless of what you do, videos inspire us to take action. So whether you're building your brand you're trying to make the best impression or you're trying to get leads, uh, it, it invites customers to really give you an opportunity for whatever you're selling or offering. So yeah, go to my website on videoworks.miami and you're gonna get the, the form. So sign up and I'll be in contact with you. Also add me on Instagram, I'll follow you back and we can connect there. Uh, and you can email me at netto at videoworks.miami. Well, Neto, um, this was a great presentation and I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to go right into um, the fireside chat uh, where I'm going to talk a little bit about our upcoming five week accelerated course. It's the course that Neto himself uh, participated in and a number of other folks on this call uh, on this uh, webinar were a part of. Um, we call it the digital marketers edge. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, one of the people who went through the course and had really transformational results. Uh, her name is Megan Hill, and she's a book editor based in Philadelphia. She was a lawyer um, who decided that she wanted to um, start a business as a book editor. And she um, tried to get back into uh, the, uh, the legal field, and uh, they just didn't accept her. And so then she went into uh, book editing. Their only problem was she had no presence whatsoever on online. She had no website, no social media, and, and a tiny ad budget. So her solution was to take our 12-week uh, program, basically the same as the five-week accelerated program that we're offering. And uh, I wanted to walk you through the real-life campaign that we helped her coach, coached her on, and then the results that she got. So Megan, for her editing program, knew that she wanted to get um, for, these are basically, she's looking for rich, aspiring memoirists, people with life experience, people in the arts, entertainment, sports, or media industries, people that are into reading, and people that had money to pay for her services. So a lot of us as business owners, 
can uh, figure out more or less describe who our ideal customer is. The trick is to figure out how to actually find them in Facebook. And here's the way she did it. So first of all, she targeted the United States, people aged 35 and up, people who matched interests in interior design, investment banking, arts, entertainment, sports, and media. Um, the interior design or investment banking is because she wanted them to be wealthy. But then she also wanted people who were interested in writing. They don't have a, a category for people interested in writing. So she then looked at people who are interested in reading. And that's Goodreads, which is a social network for readers, and The New Yorker. And that was like really, I think, one of the key brilliant turns that she made is because Facebook didn't have a targeting criteria for people who are interested in writing because Facebook is limited to what it knows uh, about you through your behaviors. But she did uh, find a lot of readers and then she additionally targeted folks who live in the top 5% of income uh, zip codes. So it used to be that you could actually target in Facebook, um, you know, actual individuals based on their household income. Uh, about two years ago with the Cambridge Analytica scandal, they took away that targeting criteria and they now only allow you to target zip codes based on income. But for someone like this who's targeting wealthy folks, this was a really powerful additional criteria. Now, talking to Neto, the basic kind of jumping off of Neto's ideas about the irresistible offer. What she did here, which I think was really savvy, is, well, she offered a 30 minute consultation and that's fine, but specifically she offered to answer questions about the pros and cons of traditional publishing versus self-publishing. I think she was really savvy to do that because if you think about somebody who's really rich and who wants to write a book about themselves. Money is no object. They're looking to hire someone to write their own book for them. So self-publishing from a financial standpoint is not a big deal for them. And that, but whether they should self-publish or go through traditional publishing, which takes longer but will reach a larger audience, is the sort of thing that they would really value a consultation about. And they may not know people who know that in their circles, as rich as they are. They just know investment bankers and other rich people, not writers. So that's where I think Megan's uh, free irresistible offer really succeeded. Finally, here was her campaign. She used Lumen5 to create a video. It was about 12 seconds long. Um, she had really uh, concise but really good copy around it. Just 14 words is all it took. She then invited them to give her their contact information uh, in this form. And then she had these results. So while in the course, she spent $429. She got 16,000 impressions, 190 people clicked on the ad. That's about a 1% conversion rate, which is pretty typical. Of those 190, 13 became leads and an amazing seven turned into sales. The value of those customers was $105,000 for Megan. Um, now, this is an extraordinary result, but as you'll see in a second, this is not completely out of the normal. Our goal with our accelerated program is to make you money now, leveraging social media advertising and other best practices around audience identification, customer journey, and so forth. And, you know, Megan said this about her experience. In just a few weeks, I built an online platform from scratch, launched a marketing campaign, and got enough clients to keep me busy through the next year. I gained the power to schedule my time on my terms and to choose which projects I want to work on. That freedom of choice is priceless. And that freedom of choice is our mission. The reason that I started BizHack was because I felt constrained in my own career not knowing this stuff. I was a journalist, I lost my job, and I found myself without many options for employment. And we specialize in training small businesses and PR and communications professionals because those are the folks who can take this knowledge and apply it immediately to grow their business, to advance their career, to make more money, and ultimately to give them the freedom of choice so that they don't have to feel like I felt when I started my learning journey, 
which is that I was an amazing expert professional with no employment options. It was a really tough time. And I vowed to myself, I'm going to learn 21st century skills, digital marketing skills to make sure that this never happens again. And then after learning them myself and teaching them at Miami Dade College for a couple of years, I pivoted to create a business that does this for other people in a fun and relatively painless and efficient way. Because I can tell you my learning journey took what's going to take you weeks took me years. So anyway, it's, it's a really heartfelt mission that we have. And um, it's also a, a mission that has really come to amazing fruition. Last year, we had more than 100 businesses run through our accelerated program. They ran 241 advertising campaigns, spent $17,000 in ads, and made more than half a million dollars in sales while in the course. These are numbers that fundamentally transform lives and careers. And this is an impact that we've had in the South Florida community and in the community across the United States that makes me so, so proud. This course also pays for itself. Um, not only are you able to generate new sales, but you can actually cover the tuition on average while taking the class. Now, how do we get these results? The one thing I wanna tell you is there are no shortcuts and it is not easy. And many, many businesses go through our program and the results don't come until later. Our methodology is to give you high quality information, personalized coaching, and a community of support and accountability to guarantee that you get these results, whether it's in the five weeks or in the time that extends beyond. What we want to make sure is you're on the right path. So many marketing agencies, so many uh, marketers um, actually have, are kind of one trick ponies or only know how to do one thing well, and they will not get you necessarily on the best path for your business. We don't have a dog in this fight, whether it's a Facebook ad or SEO, whether it's content marketing or email, you're gonna learn about and try different things and you're gonna find the, your own specific path for you professionally and for your business. Now, I like to say that our methodology really has two elements to it, science and love. By science, I mean that we're specializing in teaching adults. Adults, their brains are not as plastic as they were as kids. You don't learn just by being lectured at. You have to learn by doing. And so the cornerstone of what we do is hands-on, real-life campaigns. The love is that these campaigns are hard to execute, and we give you group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a community to help you get through the hurdles that inevitably come when you're doing this. Part of the love is what we're trying to express with these weekly webinars and to create a community of people in this community that are interested in marketing and they're interested in accelerating their businesses. We have a large community of alumni, of instructors, and fans like you, many of you, um, and we give you access to that community to help you get through and accelerate your learning journey. We really believe that the only way that you can change your life and your business is by doing. And that's what we mean by performance-based change. Many of you feel like you need to change, and yet the change will not happen unless you start taking action. And honestly, I don't care if you do it with BizHack, or if you do it with Neto, or if you do it with Russell Brunson, or if you do it with some online course, or if you just do it on your own and experiment. It's the doing that matters. And BizHack has created a program that requires the doing and holds you accountable to it. And for many people, that's just the kind of push that you need to help you get over this hump and to begin the process of being a digital marketer. We give you a support system in a community to help you get to that next level and to hold you accountable so that if you're falling behind, we know and we're watching. So I wanted to open up to any questions that you might have. I'm happy to have a, a conversation. You can take yourself off mute. Um, and I really want to encourage you to apply. Our applications are open now. Uh, we only accept businesses by application because I want to personally make sure that what we're offering is a fit for you. Um, I am also excited to announce that we did get a small scholarship fund that's available to businesses 
impacted by COVID-19, if they're interested in learning more about that, go ahead and schedule an application interview with me and I'll tell you about what we have to offer. Um, I'm hoping that uh, the funds will uh, be able to support as many of you to take this program. It would be a partial scholarship. Um, and then if you want to learn more about exactly what the program covers, you can check out our syllabus and go to our website. Um, I'm, I'm so appreciative to you guys for sticking with me and listening to me um, talk about the work that we're doing. Um, I believe so passionately uh, about the impact of this course to turn around lives and businesses. Um, I know Neto, um, you called it one of the best investments that you've ever made. Um, why, why do you feel like it was a good investment for you and your career and your entrepreneurial journey? Well, for several different reasons. Um, the first, the reason why I joined was because I wanted to give back to my family who was in Mexico and I wanted to help them in certain ways. And the only way that I can think of me being in Miami, helping them was creating the, their marketing for them. And so they, my family has a school and this course just was amazing. I, we've gotten hundreds of leads, hundreds of enrollments, and just thinking as, as the, um, the return of investment for someone who's, who's gonna be our client for around eight years, it's just beyond, uh, beyond, beyond whatever the course cost uh, when I joined. Uh, so helping my family check, helping myself for my agency, it's helped me get a lot of leads. It's helped me even coach people on how to do all these things. Uh, it's helped me connect with other students that were there that eventually became uh, friends or clients or referred me to other people. And it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this presentation because I took this course, what, three years ago then, more yeah. or less? And along the lines, I've coached with you for two different uh, cohorts. Uh, I've gone and giving pre given presentations there about three times. I'm doing this webinar with you. And I firmly believe, believe in BizHack. Um, so in terms of return of investment, if you do it right, you, you will definitely get it. And that's one of the things that you told me when I was doubtful about joining. I remember I waited to the last second and you told me, you're going to get your money back, which is one of the offers that I suggested, which is a money back guarantee. You, you can't guarantee it, but you, when you told me that, I felt peace of mind and I took that step. And I'm very happy that I did because once you understand all of this, you can really do anything in terms of the marketing. And so yeah. if someone's out there who's thinking and they know me personally, I, um, I, uh, What's what's the word when someone like you know for a politician I promote this person uh, endorse <laughs> I endorse I endorse BizHack like I really truly endorse BizHack um, whether it's for you or someone who's doing the marketing for you or a relative who who should know all this yeah anyone can benefit from this information because we are in the di digital age and knowing these tools is so beneficial yeah. BizHack 2020, woohoo! Um, you know, I, I wanna talk about a couple of different ways that you can make your money back in this program because it's actually something I've come to really understand better as I've worked with more and more businesses to the point where I'm pretty much prepared to offer a money back guarantee because if anybody goes through this program and in six months can't figure out a way to cover the tuition, honestly, we failed them because there are so many ways to monetize what we teach. I'll give you some examples. Um, I'm working right now with a big developer to help them in-house a lot of their outsourced marketing. So I can tell you that when you're large enough and if you have a good staff, it is cheaper to hire people, to experts to do the work for you than to hire agencies to do that work. This is not to denigrate agencies. Agencies are amazing. But if the scale of your marketing is large enough, then it actually makes a lot of sense for businesses to in-house that work. They actually get better results for less money. This is a form of consulting that I do that um, has an extraordinary, about a 50 to 100 to one ROI. If you were- And I'd like to say something real quick. Yeah. Uh, another uh, case study that I remember was when I was a coach in the course, there's this, uh, 
student who had a dentist who has a dentist uh, company and they invested like $200 and they got $180,000 in sales. What yeah. was it? So it was Otero Dental Ridiculous. Center. They spent $2,000. They used Facebook bot advertising and they were able to have an unbelievable return on investment and they ended up acquiring two new dental practices because um, they had had a situation where they actually had days where they were closed in some of their, they had a lot of excess inventory, in other words, and a lot of um, dentists that weren't working and they just became overwhelmed with folks. And what's so funny about Otero Dental Centers, uh, and there are testimonials on our website, uh, is their primary target audience was um, elderly folks, abuelitas in particular. They used to message them in Spanish and Angela Otero, who herself is a uh, Cubanita, um, would message them back and they loved her like her grandmother and then you know, immediately they wanted to have them be their dentist. Um, so other ways in which folks make money back, you know, Neto was really smart. Uh, he does videography services. A lot of the businesses that run through our program need a videographer. He actually made his money back by, by getting people to hire him while he was in the course. I actually made the videos for Otero Dental, the ones who made the 180,000, I made their videos for them. And yeah, from the class, I got several students uh, yeah. to do it. So, so there's that, the, you know, just kind of using the business community. If you're a service provider, that can be very powerful. You can use this knowledge to help you run ads to attract new customers, you know, create the right social media, create the search engine optimized content, the content marketing, the email, all the things that we cover so that you can actually generate new business. And then if you yourself are an agency or you run a communications or video or PR shop, you can actually upsell your existing customers with new services. And then finally, for business owners, the thing that I think is the greatest value is it allows you to understand whether your marketing is working through analytics. It allows you to interpret the analytics, understand the return on investment, and decide if you should spend more money, less money, or stop the spend entirely. Too many business owners say to me, I have this marketing agency, they're doing this work for me, and I have no idea if it's working. And I got to say that if you're in that position, it's really likely that your money is being wasted, and it's your fault because you don't know enough, and you have to learn enough to be able to figure that out. Um, so I have a, a, a lot of folks who've stuck around for this part of the call. Anybody have any questions? You can take yourself off mute and feel free to ask them. So another really common question we get is, how much of a budget do I need to set aside? Now, what I will say to you is that um, you don't need a large budget to take this course. We recommend you spend between 50 and $100 to run test campaigns to kind of figure out the mechanics of how to do this. As far as if you're a business owner, how much money to spend on acquiring leads? It's a little bit of a different question. And the answer there comes down to your customer's lifetime value. If your customer is worth to you $100 over their lifetime after you take out the expenses in uh, servicing them, then your marketing budget can be up to $100 to acquire them. If you're lifetime value of a customer, let's say you're a law firm, is $100,000, then you can spend a heck of a lot more on advertising. And that's why lawyers are the single most, ex legal keywords are the single most expensive type of keyword in Google, because lawyers tend to spend a lot of money to advertise to get new clients. Um, so anyhow, we have our five-week accelerated course taught by the former head of global social media, Alex de Carballo, coming up. Uh, it starts next week, and then we'll have another session uh, later uh, in June. And I really appreciate all of you guys uh, sticking with us and being a part of it. I hope you apply. Uh, I believe with all my heart in this, if you found these webinars valuable, imagine 20 hours of learning like this. Obviously, these webinars do have a cost um, because we're giving you one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, but it will help you solve the marketing pain point and figure out a strategy and maybe even uh, get you some leads and sales right away. So with that, hey, I just want to... Let yeah. me just jump in for quick questions. First thing, let me just thank you and Neto for the information. And uh, 
great, great nuggets to learn. Great job. Just want to know on the upcoming classes, uh, the course is, uh, how long is the course and how much time it uh, will be required from someone to be able to get a good use of the knowledge? Perfect. Great question. All that information, by the way, is in the syllabus um, in terms of the actual course and its schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. The course meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the afternoons for a couple of hours. We have labs and one-on-ones as well. Um, in terms of the knowledge uh, and how quickly you can implement it to help your business, it depends a little bit on the kind of business you run. If you run a B2B business with long sales cycles where you have a lot of relationship selling, it can take, and you know, whatever your sales cycle is, this will be a part of that. So it could take three to six months for you to generate a lead on Facebook that ultimately becomes a sale. If you sell an e-commerce product, like, my, uh, like many of the folks, like Anna Maria Carano, uh, Gabriel Velez, uh, those folks, they can get sales immediately. So they can get a return within literally hours of starting their ad. And then there's a lot of sort of folks in between. What I would say is most people who take the course do not generate leads and sales. I'm sorry, they do not generate sales while in the course. The sales come from the leads after the course is finished because it takes a little while to work the leads and to sell them on your product or service. But we obviously on average uh, generate hundreds of leads and hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales while in the course. Great. Does that Thank answer you. your question? Yeah, that, that it does. And this is not just focused on Facebook, but it covers all e-commerce, right? Yeah, this course covers um, Facebook in depth not because we necessarily feel that Facebook is the best or only platform, but because we feel that Facebook is a great learning tool. But we cover Google, we cover SEO, search engine optimization, we cover content marketing, we cover email. We've really expanded to get, cover all of Google My Business, all of the main topics uh, that a business owner needs to have a handle on. And then we dive really deep into the Facebook advertising platform. And that's where we ask you to do your real life campaign to hopefully get your leads and your sales. Okay. So we give you the big picture and then we force you to dig down um, into the nitty gritty. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Absolutely. I, I hope you uh, uh, feel free to tell me a little bit more about your business when we talk. Um, the apply.bizhack.com is basically just a form that gets us uh, to have a phone call together. Um, the course starts, uh, as I mentioned, next week. It's taught by Alex de Carvalho, the former head of social media for global social media for IBM. Uh, and he also worked for Constant Contact, the email company that competes with MailChimp. He founded his own uh, email marketing company uh, and he has worked at startups and small businesses as well. So Alex really has kind of the full picture. Uh, and then we have some amazing coaches who will work one-on-one -on -one with you during the program. Any other questions? I can see Christina Reddick is here. She's a, uh, a proud alumnus of ours. Uh, great to have you on the call. Um, Marla as well. Melissa, you're gonna be part of the next cohort. Uh, Shireen, uh, great to have you back. It's uh, another alumnus of ours. Thank you for, for sticking around and hearing me talk about BizHack. Uh, anybody wanted to, to weigh in? Um, Melissa, I'd love to, do you mind if, uh, I don't, let me see if I can unmute you. Melissa, can you hear me? I can. Um, I wanted you to talk, uh, you're a fascinating example. You run a media company. Uh, you wanna just tell us a little bit about your media company and why, um, why you've decided to take the course with us? Yeah, absolutely. So Sugarcane Global Media is multifaceted. We have a digital platform where we cover black art and culture as well as a print product that we do quarterly. Um, we also do video and film production um, I decided to take this class because, you know, clearly, you know, things have changed a lot um, and our distribution was somewhat disturbed by all of the, the closures that are, um, that are going on nationwide and worldwide. So we needed to rethink distribution. So I needed to make a, a pivot and I knew that this class would give me the skills that I need for that and also to give more value to my advertisers 
Clearly this has upset a lot of industries, um, but people still need to get the, the word out about their product. They still need to get their stories out and we can still assist them. And I wanted to be sure that I had the skills to assist them properly to make sure that their story is told. Yeah. An idea on how to do this, but just watching some of the examples, I already see what I've done wrong. So I'm excited to, to gain those skills to actually get this right so that I can make more of an impact. You know, and you're um, someone who actually has multiple ways to monetize what we're going to be teaching you. And this is something that I really like about your, you in particular. You know, as a media company, you are selling digital advertising. And so understanding how Facebook and Google do it will allow you to add value to your digital advertisers. We're also focusing on lead generation and lead generation means how to attract new advertisers to your business. You could also use it, frankly, to attract new readers as well. So you have multiple paths to leverage this digital marketing knowledge to build out that ROI that is so important to us that makes it worth your time and your money to invest in the course. And so we're very confident um, that we're going to be able to work with you to help you find a path to prosperity in all this. And I will tell you that whatever you and I think it is right now, it probably won't be. It's the doing where the discovery will happen. And that's why a course like this is so important because the learning is by doing. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited. I'm ready to start. Oh, and, um, I, and, I know that I'll, and I know that I'll be successful once I pick up these skills. I'm, I'm already confident in that. Yeah, we're ready for you too. Um, you know, I wanted to, uh, Christina, are you there? Christina Reddick? She might have stepped away. Um, Shireen, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So Shireen just graduated. She was one of our pride and joys. You work in the real estate business with K Real Estate. Real estate is a really good example um, of an area where it takes a little longer to get results. You know, as Andre asked, how long does it take to get results? It can take a little while in real estate because purchase decisions take a while and because people aren't always immediately ready to buy, but you need to be in front of them continuously in order for them to have you top of mind for when they are. Um, so Shireen, I just wanted to hear from you a little bit about, you know, how you're hoping to leverage some of what um, you've learned um, oops. Oh yeah, there you are. Uh, how some of what you've learned, uh, in your real estate practice, K real estate. Well, I find that the class was a very, um, informative in regards to, um, honing my, my pitch in regards to knowing more about my business, how to authenticate, um, getting persons to, to come on board my company in regards to the services that I provide. Um, so I was able to hone down on a, um, the story of me, of my company, and also I was able to increase the amount of persons that um, um, saw me on Facebook and uh, reach more clients. That's great. You know, thank, thank you so much for sharing. You were just such a pleasure to have in the course, and um, I'm really just impressed by, by you and your your stick to itness and, and how engaged you were just always there, always pushing, always working. You are going to have big success with that kind of work ethic. And it's been a real pleasure working with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I also wanted to in include as well that the, the coaches were very hands on. They were very um, informative. They know um, more of the topics that heightens your business and they will open up to give you more ideas in what you can do, what you can add, what you can include. Um, so that was a very much a, a good incentive for me. Yeah, we just get really invested in you and your success and we wanna be a part of it. And we wanna help you like leverage the knowledge that we have so that you can take your business to the next level. Um, Kenneth uh, Wurtenberg, I don't know if you're there, but I unmuted you. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, Kenneth, this is the first time we're talking, but I know we're um, kind of partnered in, in promoting your um, community offer. And so I thought it might be a nice chance to just say hi. And um, you are um, offer professional services. Yes, uh, I'm a CPA. 
Uh, I have an office in Miami Lakes, uh, but I have clients throughout the world. Um, I have an interesting story. I started my business when I was 26 years of age. Um, I didn't want to go through the corporate environment and I saw that the only way to be successful for me was to be self-employed. That's my niche in startups, so helping people um, you know, be successful. It's very difficult to start a business and be successful. Over 80% of them fail in the first two years and there's many reasons why. Uh, so unlike many other CPAs or accountants, I like to communicate with people, talk to them, give them personalized service, and be more than just a preparer of a tax form or any type of form or financial statement um, and give them coaching as to how they can succeed, what they're doing correctly or incorrectly with the over 43 years of business experience I've attained in many different industries. Kenneth, is there a chance, I'm looking right now at your desk and your remote control, is there a chance I can see your face? Sure, let me just bring it up here. I just minimized, I, I can't, you know, I see, I'm, yeah, I'm seeing your right arm. Uh, it's oh, a very sorry, nice you Yay, hi Kenneth. How you doing? <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, I do like your desk, it's pretty clear compared to mine. <laughs> Thank um, you. You know, the, the way that we, we get a lot of professional service providers who go through the program, whether these are uh, accountants or lawyers, um, the reason why this program is very helpful to them is twofold. Number one, it's really helpful to help you get in front of the right customer and attract uh, the right business to your practice. You know, for many of these, this is a B2B practice. And so LinkedIn can be very, very effective. And we do cover LinkedIn advertising and how to target, you know, business owners in different industries using LinkedIn's pretty powerful targeting mechanisms. What I'll say is that learning Facebook is harder uh, and there's a lot more bells and whistles. Facebook, after you've learned, we spend four sessions, three sessions on Facebook and an hour on LinkedIn and you get LinkedIn because you get Facebook. LinkedIn basically, which is owned by Microsoft, copied Facebook's playbook and they've gotten much easier to use. And LinkedIn offers much more powerful targeting for the B2B marketer. It's also more expensive, which is the downside. But the other way in which Kenneth can make money through BizHack is that your audience and my audience are the same. And so, you know, if I share my clients with you, you share your clients with me, and we create a trusted referral relationship so that we can support each other. That is also a really explicit part of the BizHack ecosystem. We are trying to support small businesses. BizHack in their marketing, Kenneth in their accounting and financials, and you can't have one without the other. Uh, in fact, uh, the way I like to think of it is that if you don't have control over your finances as a small business owner, you are doomed to failure. Absolutely. So you need to know how to manage your financial statements, read them, you need to understand how to do forecasting, but you definitely don't need to do it yourself, and that's where Kenneth comes in. On the marketing side, marketing is not a cost center. Marketing is a growth engine. You need to learn enough to be able to hire the right people, set the right goals, and interpret their results. You don't need to do it yourself. That said, you need to educate yourself in financials, and you need to educate yourself in digital marketing, or you cannot be a 21st century business owner. And I believe that with all my heart, having been through the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program Accelerator, they spent a full 25% of that curriculum on financial statements and forecasting. Not because they expect business owners to become accountants, but because they know that you cannot be a successful business owner if you don't have that knowledge. And to the exact same extent, if you want just someone to solve your marketing for you, you are going to fail. That's right. Marketing is not something you solve. Marketing is individual to your specific business, your specific audience, and your specific person, right? It's all about your story and how to express that online to attract people to you. So as a small business, if you're looking for a shortcut, I, I'm here to tell you there isn't one, right? The best case scenario if you're looking to sh for a shortcut is you happen to get lucky and hire someone who can do it, 
often at very high expense and often without you knowing why it works so that if that person leaves, you might be in the situation you found you're in. A far better path is to invest the time and the effort, whether with me or someone else, to learn the stuff at a high level, to learn how to steer that ship and then to run it from there. Good advice. <laughs> well, I love accountants because honestly, uh, I fired my previous accountant when I went through the, the Goldman Sachs program and got all that training. And they say that more than half of the businesses that go through it uh, end up finding new accountants because what you're looking for is a partner, someone who's on your board of directors, someone who understands your needs, not a cookie cutter, uh, not somebody who just produces a rip and read report. And I got to say, too many marketing agencies fall into similar bad habits as too many accountants. And so, you know, Kenneth, it's great to have you a part of our network and nice to, to meet you, uh, so to speak, for, uh, for the first time. Thank you. I used to add one more thing. It's um, the key to communicating with people is not at the level that we are as, as professionals, but to talk to them on their understanding and to educate them, just like you said. It's like going to the doctor's office, you know, a great doctor has good bedside manners and will talk to you in a, in a way that you can understand as a layperson. My, my profession is very complex and te technical. Um, and indeed, if, if I start talking like you're another CPA, you're never gonna understand it, which most accountants do, by the way. Indeed, you gotta get down to their level. And you said a very important thing. Um, the individual needs to learn and get educated on what we're saying. And we as professionals needs to talk to them and say, do you understand what I'm saying? You know, how can I get down to your level? But we can only go down so low and then we depend uh, on th these people, you know, to get educated in a way they can follow what we're saying and know, oh, I, I got that what you're saying and, and train them that way so to have that understanding. You know, I just want to let you have the last word here because what you said about accounting, it's technical, you need a partner, but you also need to know enough to be dangerous and you have to master the analytics and how to read and interpret that. I couldn't have said it better. The exact same principle applies to digital marketing. And that is really the mission and purpose of our five week accelerated program. Much as I love these weekly webinars, um, they're giving you just a bite sized piece. It's really a program that takes you from soup to nuts. That's going to get you that, uh, knowledge that will empower you to take your business and your career to the next level. So um, with that, I just want to say thank you guys for sticking around the brave uh, folks who are still here with me. I look forward to having a personalized conversation with each of you. Uh, schedule that at apply.bizhack.com. And Neto, thank you again for all your kind words and for your amazing presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye, everyone. We'll see you soon. Be safe out there.